Mom, Dad, listen to me. I've become paralyzed. I don't want my wife to take care of me, so I'm thinking of getting a divorce. I'm really sorry. When my in-laws and I went to visit, my husband, Tim, confessed with a look of utter despair. He had been in a car accident while on a business trip. Upon hearing my husband's heart-wrenching words, his parents collapsed to their knees, lamenting their son's misfortune, but quickly stood up. Don't worry, Tim. We'll be here for you. Michelle will support you too, I'm sure. They turned to me, their eyes conveying a message of, let's support each other from now on. What happened next left my in-laws speechless. No, I'm already single. Tim says he doesn't want me to take care of him, but I never planned to take care of him in the first place. I spoke in a flat tone, completely inappropriate for the situation, and immediately felt a sharp slap on my left cheek. How can you joke at a time like this, Michelle? Your husband just told you he can't walk for the rest of his life, and you respond with such a cold-hearted comment. Calm down. Violence isn't the answer. Besides, even in a private room, the next room can hear us. But. I feel the same way. Michelle, you're acting like this is someone else's problem. In times like these, families are supposed to support each other, right? Support each other as a family, huh? How wonderful that would have been. My husband and in-laws know nothing. On the contrary, I know everything. Though I remained expressionless, my heart was filled with anger. My in-laws waited for my next words, glaring at me. While it was unexpected for my MIL to slap me, given their ignorance of our situation, it was a natural reaction. But I was determined to reveal the truth. Taking a deep breath, I began to explain. Let me explain step by step. First, please look at this. I took out a prepared piece of paper and showed it to my in-laws. MIL took the paper with a puzzled expression. This is a medical report? As MIL said, it was a medical report from when I had visited the hospital. After reading its contents, my in-laws looked shocked. You hurt your head? How did this happen? What on earth happened? And it's recent too. This is from when Tim hit me, causing me to hit my head on the desk and undergo surgery. At that moment, my in-laws' eyes widened in shock. Wah, you mean Tim hit you? Tim hitting Michelle, what happened? Meanwhile, my husband couldn't hide his agitation from my sudden revelation. His eyes darted around conspicuously. Wait! Michelle, what are you talking about? With a flustered look, my husband tried to speak to me as if he knew nothing. But I ignored him. I started to tell my in-laws about the abuse I had suffered from my husband. What I'm about to tell you may be hard to believe. Because Tim always pretended to be a good husband in front of you. I wasn't pretending, why are you saying this, Michelle? I always thought Tim was a good husband, but he wasn't in front of you? Yes. At first, he was a very kind husband who took the initiative in household chores. But about a year after we got married, he started ignoring and yelling at me. This abuse has continued until now. I explained calmly without changing my expression. But my husband denied the abuse, maintaining his innocence. What are you talking about? When have I ever abused you? Tim abusing you, it's hard to believe. Yeah, it's hard to imagine Tim doing that. My in-laws looked confused, unable to believe my words. It was understandable. Tim had played the perfect husband so well. Moreover, they had always described him as honest and gentle, even as a child, without ever going through a rebellious phase. I didn't expect my in-laws to believe me just by my words. So, I prepared my next move. I took out a small device from my bag and asked my in-laws. Do you know what this is? A small device. I've never seen it before. What is it? Not recognizing the device, they asked me. I then turned to my husband. Do you know what this is? Is that? My husband seemed to realize what it was. I revealed the device's identity. As Tim seems to know, this is a surveillance camera. 
It's amazing how nowadays, you can easily get such high-quality, small cameras. As soon as I revealed the camera's nature, my husband showed a panicked expression. I didn't miss that. He probably thought I was incapable of anything. But that was part of my plan. Staring at my husband, he met my gaze with fear, unlike when he used to abuse me. Ignoring my husband, I took out a tablet and played a video. Let's watch this. Wait, what are you doing? My husband's face turned pale. He must have guessed what I had recorded. Yes, it was a collection of my husband's abusive acts. The video I played showed the moment he hit me. Don't laugh without my permission. Next time you laugh in front of me, it won't be just this. Yes. With a smack, my husband's angry voice echoed. In the video, I collapsed from the pain and fear of being slapped, hitting my head on the desk and bleeding. But my husband didn't care and stormed out, slamming the door. Seeing this shocking video, my in-laws turned pale. It was hard to believe. They had believed their son was a good husband, but the scene before them was appalling. The horrifying sight must have deeply shocked them. This can't be real. Tim. How could you? Tim did nothing when he saw me injured. So I treated myself and went to a hospital alone at night. My in-laws looked at my husband in disbelief. He avoided their eyes, looking embarrassed. Since the abuse began, Tim had gotten angry whenever I showed any emotion, whether laughing or crying. That day too, he hit me for laughing at a message from a friend. Don't laugh without my permission. How many times have I heard that phrase? Tim gets upset if I laugh even a little and hits me or throws things. This isn't the only recording of his abuse. If this isn't enough, I can show you more. No. I believe you. This is, unmistakably Tim. It must be hard for them to believe that their proud son had been doing such despicable things to his wife. Both of them sat in stunned silence, their faces pale. Still expressionless, I calmly explained the facts. You can't deny it, can you? Not with such perfect video evidence. Without this, you would have gotten away with it. That's why I installed the surveillance camera. This video and the medical report are more than enough proof of your abuse. Recording me without permission, what's your goal in doing this? Isn't it obvious? To show them your true nature, which you've been desperately hiding. Finally, Tim started showing his true colors in front of his parents, but this was just the beginning. I have more videos to show you. Shall we watch the next one? What's next? I played another video, showing Tim working on something in his office. Is this, no way. He seemed to recognize what he was doing. The video showed Tim signing a divorce paper and then placing it in a drawer beside his desk. As you can see, Tim prepared the divorce papers himself. And you can guess what I did next, right? That's right, I had secretly taken the divorce papers while he was on his business trip and submitted them to the courthouse. The divorce papers have been officially accepted. So, I am already single. I reiterated the facts to my in-laws. They seemed to realize that my expressionless demeanor was due to the abuse I had suffered. Mael put her hand on my back and said, I can't believe this. That's why, Michelle, you've always been so expressionless. I'm sorry we didn't notice. My in-laws are very kind people. Knowing the truth brought tears to their eyes. Then they turned to Tim, raising their voices to question him. They fully believed my story now. Tim, what have you done to Michelle all this time? We didn't raise you to be like this. You're an adult, act like one. Explain yourself. Realizing he couldn't lie anymore, Tim began to speak haltingly about what had happened at work. Actually, I... I've been harassed by my boss and colleagues at work. Going to work every day became unbearable, but I couldn't quit, and I had no one to talk to. Harassment. Mil's angry face seemed to soften a bit. After all, as a mother, she must be worried about her son. Tim continued his story. This business trip was actually forced on me by a colleague who was supposed to go. 
They blame me for their mistakes and take credit for my successes. They all laugh at me. I can't get their laughter out of my head. Is that why you told Michelle not to laugh? M.I.L.'s face turned from anger to concern. Tim continued, tears streaming down his face. I had nowhere to escape to. So, I took it out on Michelle at home. I treated her horribly. I'm so sorry. I was out of my mind. I'm truly sorry. Tim bowed his head deeply on the hospital bed, showing his regret. For a moment, I was worried that my in-laws might be swayed by his tears. But my worries were unfounded. We understand your situation. But the fact remains, you abused your wife, didn't you? Pathetic. An adult taking out his stress on his wife. Apologize to Michelle sincerely. Hearing the confirmation of the abuse from Tim himself, my in-law's anger erupted again. Tim had hoped to gain their sympathy and shift their anger away from him. But it backfired. No matter the reasons, there's no excuse for abuse. My in-laws didn't say it out loud, but I could tell they felt that way. Tim, realizing the severity of his actions, hurriedly apologized to his parents. Dad, Mom. I'm sorry for disappointing you. Michelle, I'm truly sorry. I'll pay alimony properly. Of course, you'll pay alimony. Michelle, I'm so sorry for our foolish son. We're truly sorry. We'll make sure he takes responsibility. My in-laws joined in apologizing. I felt relieved that they were reasonable people. Had they sided with Tim, it would have been unbearable. But Tim's apology wasn't enough. I had more in store. Please, raise your heads. There's no need for you to apologize. But don't be deceived. This isn't the only thing Tim has done. This isn't the only thing? What else has he done? Again, my in-laws looked bewildered. M.I.L. looked both angry and dismayed by her son. As the tense atmosphere filled the room, I abruptly left. Now the real show begins. Five minutes later, Tim was shocked. I returned to the room with a woman. For Tim, this woman's presence was completely unexpected. Let me introduce you. This is Nina, Tim's mistress. What? Not only abuse but an affair too. Tim. What's going on? How much more are you going to disappoint us? My in-laws couldn't hide their shock and questioned him. Tim, visibly agitated, denied the affair. What are you talking about? I don't know this woman. Michelle, you must be mistaken. Did you really think I knew nothing all this time? How naive. I asked coldly, watching Tim tremble. I knew he wouldn't admit to the affair immediately. So, I quickly played another video on the tablet. No, stop it! The video showed Tim and Nina having an affair in his car. This footage was captured by a camera I had installed in his car. Tim tried to stop the video, but I wasn't foolish enough to let him. I installed cameras not just at home, but in your car too. You've gone too far. Would you have stopped otherwise? And I have plenty more videos. Thank you for providing such solid evidence. I had suspected the affair from the signs while monitoring him at home. Realizing the abuse might stem from the affair, I installed a camera in his car. The clear footage confirmed the affair, leading me to gather more evidence. With undeniable proof, I revealed more facts to my in-laws. The reason Nina could come here immediately is because she's in the next room. The story about Tim's business trip was a lie. It was actually a vacation with her, and they got into an accident. She was also injured and is hospitalized here. Luckily for her, she only suffered minor injuries. Tim was paralyzed, but Nina miraculously escaped unscathed. Knowing I had uncovered everything, Tim remained silent. A vacation affair? So this is all self-inflicted. You're getting what you deserve for your actions. The anger of my in-laws seemed to reach its peak. My MIL's fist was trembling with rage. I turned to my husband and said, 
Along with the divorce, I'll also be demanding alimony for both the abuse and the affair. Though I don't need your agreement to make that claim. My husband remained silent, but all he could do was admit his guilt and apologize. If he didn't, the wounds would only deepen. I gazed at my silent husband with pity, but then he did something unimaginable. He suddenly snapped and started insulting me. Fine. If you want a divorce so badly, I'll give it to you. I married you with the intention of making you my housekeeper from the start. Whatever you say now doesn't matter to me. The divorce papers are already submitted, so we're no longer married. Great. That works out well. I was planning to dump you once I didn't need you anymore anyway. Now that I've met Nina, you're useless. I'll pay the alimony, so just get lost. Fine, I'm leaving. Make sure you pay the alimony. Now that he no longer needed to pretend to be a good husband, he hurled insults at me one after another. Despite his mockery, my expression remained unchanged. Without another word, I left the hospital room. Inside, I felt a mix of relief that it was finally over and a sense of clarity regarding my feelings towards him. As I walked away with a light step, I heard a voice call out to me. Wait! Michelle! I recognized Amiel's voice without turning around. There's no need to follow me. I'm fine. No, wait. It's not just about Tim. I slapped you earlier without knowing the full story. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Amiel apologized deeply. Please. There are other people around. There's no need for that. But. I'm truly grateful that you and Fiel took my side instead of Tim's. Thank you. Of course. Knowing Tim turned out to be such a terrible person, it's disgraceful as a parent. I'm so sorry, Michelle. Tears streaming down her face, Mal hugged me. Where did we go wrong in raising him? I promise we'll make him pay the alimony and apologize sincerely to you. I'll go back to the room and give him a few more slaps. Mal's anger still hadn't subsided. They promised to convince their son to apologize, but I replied. Thank you, but you don't need to do anything. What do you mean? Do you have a plan to punish Tim? Yes. Just wait and see. Indeed, without doing anything, my husband would soon be cornered. I knew everything. A few days later, in my new home, I waited for a phone call. My husband had left multiple missed calls and emails, but I had my own schedule. I had set a time for him to call me. At the appointed time, my husband called, sounding frantic and disorganized. I couldn't make out what he was saying. Calm down. What happened? Nina ran off with my money. She's not answering my calls, and I don't know where she went. I can't even go look for her in my condition. What should I do? Oh, I see. What kind of response is that? Do you know something? I revealed the truth to my panicking husband. As a matter of fact, I knew this would happen. I had already met with Nina months before. She thought my husband was single because he had told her so. When she learned he was married, she was shocked and immediately gave me money as compensation. From her reaction, I knew she was telling the truth. Nina told me you were just a cash cow to her. No, that can't be true. Nina had planned to discard my husband from the start, just as he had planned to discard me. I had asked Nina to pretend to be unaware of everything until my revenge was complete. Nina agreed, and my husband had no clue of her deception. By the time of the hospital incident, Nina knew everything. You must be kidding. Tricking me like this, is this what a wife should do? What are you talking about? You tried to use me and throw me away first. This is just karma. If you treat people like tools, you can't complain when you're treated the same way. This time, my husband had nothing to say. He couldn't argue back. He was always self-centered, thinking he was superior. He never saw how much he hurt others. If he didn't change, his life was over. But that was no longer my concern. All I wanted was for him to suffer. Are we done here? 
I'm hanging up now. As I moved the phone away from my ear, I heard him shout, wait. What now? I've realized how much I need you. Please, take me back. I was speechless. How could he even think that way? To think he'd ask to get back together at this point. Are you out of your mind? How could you even think like that? Then, I delivered the final blow, revealing his hidden truth. I know you've already been fired from your job. What are you talking about? He tried to deny it, but it was true. It was pointless to lie. He couldn't fix it now. Pathetic. I continued. You lied about being harassed by your boss and colleagues. It was actually you pushing work and mistakes onto others, right? How, how did you find out? I called your company to confirm your trip and learned you were the problem. They fired you because of that. Even when facing the truth, he tried to deceive. What you really wanted was my money. You can't work in your condition, so you wanted me to support you. I saw through it all. No! I truly realized your value. He tried to continue his lies, but I completely rejected his twisted thinking. I will never forgive you for using me as a tool, lying to me and your parents, and trying to discard me. Finally, he seemed to understand my contempt. He expressed regret and apologized. I'm sorry. I was always dependent on you. I thought you'd forgive me in the end. Though we couldn't see each other's faces over the phone, his tone conveyed a genuine apology. Finally, you apologized. But I will never forgive you. You'll have to live alone and lonely. With those words, I cut him off and hung up the phone. It's insane that he couldn't understand others' pain without experiencing it himself. But I was just as foolish. I married him without realizing his true nature and was too scared to stand up for myself. Even with my in-laws nearby as allies, I didn't rely on them. I had my regrets and reflections, but now, it's all finally over. I felt a wave of relief and let out a deep sigh. Later, my husband sought help from my in-laws. But since I had already informed them of everything, they were even more furious with him than before. By rejecting him, my in-laws left him with no one to support him, and he hit rock bottom. As for Nina, she found another mark and continued her schemes. People don't change that easily. However, she ended up targeting the wrong person and found herself cornered. I hope she learns a lesson from this and reforms, even just a little. Later, my in-laws came to apologize to me again. Michelle, we're truly sorry for everything. We know apologizing won't make it right, but we are deeply sorry. They apologized even more earnestly than my husband had. But I held no grudge against them. As I told you before, there's no need for you to apologize. I'm genuinely grateful to you both. Michelle, we'll always be here for you. If you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. They smiled warmly at me. Seeing their smiles, I couldn't help but feel a warmth in my heart. Oh, Michelle, it's been so long since I've seen you smile. I hadn't been able to show my emotions for so long, but I found myself smiling without realizing it. My future is bright. I truly felt that, savoring the happiness of the present. 